For those of you that don't know what a eulogy is, a eulogy is a message talking about someone's life from start to finish. I've written my own eulogy actually, and it is to an old version of myself that no longer serves me. I also am publicly stating this eulogy for those who have been afraid to take ownership of things that they have participated in to create a mess or havoc in other people's lives. And you were afraid to take ownership of it. But I'm providing a space for you to know that you're not alone. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Fran. So I'll be addressing myself uh, in the eulogy in the first and third person. And here I go. To my loving Francis, to the baby, toddler, preteen, teen, high schooler, young adult, and adult. I love you with an everlasting love. This search for love, which you seem to always be on the quest for in the form of trusting arms and haphazard love. I'm amazed by your courage to live life on your own terms, regardless of outward opinions. I'm eternally grateful for your ability to show up for yourself, even if you didn't know what that looked like. I know at times life seem unfair, but I now understand the reasoning for your decisions. You did what you thought you needed for survival, and those choices, whether good or bad, have led you on a path to inner healing and peace. Jay, my life coach, assigned a writing exercise to address people I needed to forgive, and my brother William was one of them. I didn't send the letter. It was more of a cathartic process to release the unforgiveness and provide an avenue for the unspoken grievances. Due to a falling out, we hadn't spoken in a long time. Interestingly, my brother William sent a text telling me that I wasn't ready to have a real conversation with him about the past. But little did my brother know I was not the same sister he once knew. We scheduled time to chat about our differences. And it was in that conversation that I had become fully aware that I was conveniently forgetting incidences of my infractions upon him and others as a way of refusing to address my past. Having to remember those tra tragic events was an emotionally painful journey for me to accept. The responsibility of admitting my participation meant I had to bear the heavy burden of its results. And at that time, it wasn't a skill I possessed. My parents weren't taught this either. So life became my teacher. I had so many uncomfortable moments of growth, especially with my own children. I'm not sure when I realized how much baggage I had, but I was on a quest to unlearn 40 years of emotional and mental damage. It was through child development courses, group counseling, private therapy sessions, self-development classes and books, breathwork seminars, grounding, and whatever other tools I could get my hands on or listen to to become a better person. I have four brothers who at the time were in elementary school and I was a teenager. 
I had physically abused and beaten them like they were my equals. They were defenseless little kids. I'm ashamed to openly admit this and afraid of public ridicule. But I can't tell the full story of my life without sharing the truth of where I've been and what I have done, even if those decisions weren't beautiful. Yes, I was a product of my home environment, but we are given choices to consciously make. What happened to me happened to my stepdad and my mom. They failed to recognize the patterns of the maleficent behavior. At that time, I didn't either and chose to take my anger out on my little brothers whom I was supposed to love and care for. Instead, I hurt them in so many ways and perpetuated the same traumatic cycle. Their emotional scars showed up in the outcomes of their choices and the lives they lived with their families and partners. Brothers, it is with deep regret and remorse that I write this. I am repentant for the acts I committed towards all of you. Over the years, I had heard you all retell the stories of my improper guidance as a big sister to those around you. I failed to recognize that it was deeper than just a memory. It was a cry of unaddressed pain and grief that I needed to acknowledge. I am so sorry I took so long to take ownership of the things I did and said to you all that created and made you feel harmed and unsafe. You all were carrying the weight of this grief inside all these years without having spoken of how this truly made you feel. This story is recounted only as context to gain a perspective of an unguided mind. For example, as school kids, I, the teen, made you all fight each other, your friends and neighborhood kids. I used it as a form of fighter training to be fearless and not scared like I felt with your dad, to be brave and not how I felt on the inside, little and weak, to be powerful and not feel like me powerless. Your hands would be used as your voice to be heard and command respect, something I didn't have. I projected so many insecurities onto you all. Brothers, I take ownership of my actions and not represent myself as a victim, but as a violator. You all have the grounds to dismiss my plea for forgiveness as these, as these acts were life altering and may take a lifetime to process your individual healing. As I reflect on my participation in these events, I know I was the cause of our breakdown as siblings. As you all are grown now and have cultivated your own families, I recall trying to keep in touch with everyone, yet not receiving a consistent callback or excuses not to get together. It may have been a subconscious coping mechanism for your mental health to create physical distance between us and reduce communication to express your grievances towards me. How could I think that something like this was forgotten with all of you when my 44 year old ass is still working through the shit your dad did to me as a kid to this day? This is my duty to right my wrongs, and I am extremely sorry that I did that to all of you in the state of my ignorance. Francis, I want you to know that I forgive you too. Francis, you have done your job here and are no longer responsible to hold on to those hurtful memories. You can let them go now. Francis, 
I give you my promise that I will look out for you and choose only those experiences that are for your highest good. By the way, I'm sure you noticed that I'm in a safe space now and learn to love myself by sitting in the acceptance of past decisions because they cannot be changed. I am actively doing the emotional work needed for my inner healing. And I wrote a book about it called, Can You Hear Me? As a matter of fact, Francis, I want you to meet Fran. She's the healed version you are waiting for to relieve you of your survivalist duties. Francis, thank you for doing the foundational work to bring Fran here, as this journey could not have been done without you. Francis, your work is evident in the conversations I now have with myself, my children, and those who would allow me to share my new energy with them. Francis, I release you into the energy of the universe.